Hi, it's Adam from Months and PCs, and today we are dissecting the brain. No, not that brain, the brain of the computer, the central processing unit, or CPU for short, to see exactly how it works. What does the terminology mean? And why is it so important to have the right CPU for our daily tasks? I'm going to try and keep this as straightforward as possible, but if you have any questions throughout this video, do put them in the comments below. Let's get to it. The central processing unit is the brain of all computers, and as suggested in the name, this is where all data is processed. The motherboard connects all the other components like the storage, the RAM, the graphics card to the CPU for data to be organized and then sent back to the required component. When looking at specifically consumer PCs and laptops, you will frequently hear Intel or AMD, and these are the two main manufacturers for CPUs. AMD also has its own line of graphics cards, although we'll be breaking those down in another video, so make sure you're subscribed to catch that. Let's take a quick look at both CPUs. From the top, they're both quite similar. But underneath, as you can see, the AMD chip has pins sticking out of it, and the Intel chip is smooth. These need a motherboard with the correct socket to fit them in. We'll also be covering motherboards in a later video, so do click that subscribe. The main terms you'll hear when talking about CPUs is cores, threads and clock speeds. Let's start with cores. These are physical parts of the CPU. The more cores you have, the more data you can process at the same time. So let's take this mid-range Ryzen 5 3600 for example. This CPU has 6 cores and 12 threads, so that's 6 physical cores inside the CPU. Cores are quite simple, so what's a thread? The threads are a virtual code that essentially breaks each core into two giving us in this example 12 virtual streams that we can process data through. Although each core has two threads to process data through, a core can only deal with one thread at a time. It alternates between the two efficiently to allow for more tasks to be running with little downtime. Each time an application is opened, for example, the CPU will assign a thread to deal with the data for that specific application. You can see why if you're doing more on your PC, you need more cores and threads and thus a better CPU. Simple, right? Drop me a like if you're understanding up to this point. So this is not the be all and end all. The speed at which data is processed through the thread is dependent on the clock speed. Now this is generally measured in gigahertz or megahertz. The giga is one billion and the mega is one million. This is how many times a second data is being sent to the cores. This Ryzen 3600, for example, has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz. The base clock meaning when the computer is running at idle. So that's 3.6 billion times a second that data can be sent. But this CPU has 12 threads through its six cores. So times that number by 12, and that gives you 43 billion 200 million. Now that's a lot of data. So taking that logic into account, the clock speed affects how quick the data is processed, having a higher clock speed is good, right? Well, yes and no. Higher clock speeds will increase the data being processed, but it will also require more power, and more power creates more heat, which in turn creates what is known as thermal throttling, where the parts are unable to work optimally due to their temperature. This is why when you purchase a better CPU, it's always best to find a cooling solution to keep your temperatures down and your computer running at its best. So when looking at buying a new CPU, it's just cores, clocks and threads, right? Almost. The optimization that happens is very different when it comes to the way that both Intel and AMD approach this. AMD have their Zen 3 architecture that uses the internal cache or short-term memory in a different way to Intel. I won't get into that too much on today's video. Intel is a well-rounded CPU option and with their many years of experience they've been the leading CPU manufacturer for years. However, in recent years AMD are catching up and even surpassing Intel in some areas. The price per performance is generally a bit better on AMD if you can get the hardware at RRP. But that doesn't mean that AMD doesn't have its flaws, and AMD CPUs sometimes have compatibility issues with software, particularly if it's a smaller development team, and it can sometimes be a little buggy. Nothing too major these days if you've got a basic knowledge of PCs, but it's not perfectly ironed. So once you've processed all of the data in your processing unit, all you've got to do is decide are you team red or team blue? 
let us know in the comments below and we'll see you in the next one.